Vehicle Code, April 22nd, public hearing on Senate Bill 124 and Senate Bill 131. The Joint Committee, um, I always read that wrong because that's what it says. It says the Joint Committee on Subcommittee on the Revision of the Motor Vehicle Code will come to order for what is likely to be, and we all hope will be, the last meeting of the Joint Committee. And um, we have two bills. I hope they're not complicated. <laughs> and um, I must say, we know we're not at the end of the process, and the House members still are on the receiving end of the process, as is the Senate floor and the Senate full committee. But I thought that it would be a good idea to uh, wind up with just a little special foil there for you to say thank you to everybody. <laughs> Claudia, let's move right along to Senate Bill 124. I'd be glad to, Madam Chair. Senate Bill 124 is a bill that the uh, subcommittee has seen before. Um, this was a bill that was of concern to the banking industry. Um, Mr. Bronner is in West Virginia. Uh, we talked about this bill this morning, long distance after uh, Motor Vehicles Division and uh, Don Fordyce um, came up with a solution to the problem. Oh, okay. So I will report on the solution, and Joanne is here to uh, go into any detail if you have questions. Since she was at that meeting and I wasn't, in fact, we were talking about another bill, and this bill came up, and they kind of worked it all out. Okay, okay. so, so um, Mr. Fordyce is rep representing the bank. Mm -hmm. Joanne, you want to come tell us about the explain the, the deal. We have some amendments, right? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay, that's even better, I guess. Are we going to stay moving? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Madam Chair, for the record, mm -hmm. Joanne Peterson, the Motor Vehicles Division. Um, the banker's concern on this bill basically you may recall, had to do with the permissive titling and the fact that a vehicle might be titled or might not be titled, which is in fact a problem not only with what we're proposing to do here, but with other provisions of, of existing law. Um, in our discussions with Mr. Fordyce, one of the um, ideas or suggestions would be were a vehicle not normally to be titled that one of the requirements of the rule would be that the applicant get a UCC check against um, either the, under the applicant's name or if he has recently purchased this vehicle from someone else under that person's name to determine whether in fact there was a UCC filing against that particular vehicle. And Mr. Fordyce didn't seem to have a problem with that. Now, we don't know what that will do in terms of impact on the Secretary of State's office or, you know, what <coughs> kinds of things um, might come up on that, but we were proposing to look into that in relation to our rules. So you were looking at promulgating a rule to require that, you want to say it your That way? the applicant for title on a vehicle that normally wouldn't be required to be titled um, apply for a, a UCC search with the Secretary of State's office to verify whether, in fact, there are any liens against that particular um, vehicle, at least under that applicant's name or the seller's name if it's been recently sold. And that's possible. So we understand. Um, I don't know what that would cost the applicant at this point or, you know, what kind of a workload it might affect um, a Secretary of State's office. but. Mr. Ford, I seem to think that it was a plausible solution. Questions from the committee or comments from the committee? Uh, John, do you have any idea yet how many of those happened? Madam Chair, Senator Simmons, no, I don't at this time. We were doing some checking on our file to see how many non-registered vehicles we have. Um, that, in part, is complicated by plate transfers and other things which take plates off from vehicles that really are, you know, registered but because of the, the process don't have a plate on them at the time we check our files, but we are looking into that. I don't, I don't know what the volumes are right now. Hmm. Well, uh, 
Senator Fry? No, I'm not. Um, Do you want Claudia to ask hers first? Oh, sure, yes. Okay, Claudia. I was just going to make a couple of comments. So, Why um, don't you? <laughs> I checked with the council's office, and we also discussed this, that in fact within this bill there is the broad authority to do quite a bit within the rule. Um, Frank Rado felt that that was, that was fine. I think um, he also wants a little time to <coughs> think about what kind of problems they really have, um, meaning that, that they'll spend a little time during the interim looking in more detail. Um, the bill does give the MV the authority to, to adopt the authority that they don't have now, and uh, that's preferable from the banking industry standpoint than doing nothing. Um, and they didn't have really any hard and fast suggestions, and anything else might have a ripple effect that no one can judge what, what may happen down the line. See, that means the Transportation Committee gets its banking bill for the session. The bank is probably all right on this one. I think they would like it if a rule was promulgated that is helpful. I mean, otherwise, they don't even know what's out there. But, but if this goes with the rule that goes with it that way, it would be helpful. Well, it would be helpful. I would think. Well, I think it's helpful. Well, Madam Chair, I agree with you. I would like to see the brought this problem up to the interim committee in the first place because it did appear to me to present a, a change in the Uniform Commercial Code without making that change in the Uniform Commercial Code. Um, the One of the difficulties in coordination with UCC is that their files are kept by names of the uh, owner or uh, borrower rather than by the vehicle identification number or even the description of the vehicle. And I, the UCC form can just say um, trucks or equipment or whatever, and that's sufficient under UCC to, to identify it. Hmm. Um, I, I guess that uh, about the only practical thing we can do in, in the light of any kind of statistics, either from MVD or from the bankers is to uh, go ahead with the bill and then uh, uh, everyone is alerted to what's going on that's concerned about it and if there is a definite problem bring it back to the next session. And so Figure out a better way to do it. Yeah. But before you do any rule promulgation, you're going to have some discussions with all the involved people to figure out if there's a particular better way to do a rule? Madam Chair, that is correct. We will be working with the banks on this. And as I indicated, their problem <laughs> seems to go back into current law, which oh, is a problem. Oh, the already there. Yeah. yeah, regardless of this. So I think there is a much bigger issue that needs to be looked at, okay. probably in the interim. And Sure. The present sure, law and that you've been doing it, and uh, is that what you mean by the present, the problem with the present law? Madam Chair, Senator Simmons, no, even without this bill, or even if we had never titled a single vehicle, current law bases whether they're subject to titling or not on such things as use, weight, ownership, the various exemptions aren't by vehicle type, and this seems to be what is creating the problem. Um, a uh, vehicle might be subject to title if they register it at 1,801 pounds, but it's not subject if they register it at 1,800 pounds. Mm -hmm. Before the discussion, is there any objection to recommending this on to the full committee with a detailed recommendation? So ordered. <coughs> Do I get to do the last one even louder than that? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Senate Bill, uh, Joanna, are you going to comment on, no, Wayne's, um, it is Wayne. Mm -hmm. I'm getting so I can remember all of their names. <laughs> <laughs> Senate Bill 131. <clears throat> um, is Wayne going to present this or is Claudia? 
Oh, I it's think I can. <laughs> I'll, I'll present this. <laughs> well, Senate Bill 131, in fact, I think uh, Wayne and I both had kind of a problem on if for no other reason it doesn't look like it's doing very much. Um, this bill was a result of some comments made in the Attorney General's commentary mm -hmm. having to do with the language in 439, which is the provisions, which are, mm -hmm. section is, is the section that allows DMV to adopt standards for vehicle performance and vehicle equipment um, consistent with federal guidelines. The AG's office pointed out some of the language was obsolete and they made some suggestions such as removing the words in line seven of the bill, the first rules, and just say rules. And then they also pointed out that, um, and I think also um, DMV pointed out, that line 28 of the bill, the division may not adopt any standards relating to headlights in this section, goes back to the time when the state adopted halogen headlights despite the prohibition against them at the federal level. Um, I think Wayne probably knows more about that than I do, but those, those language, whatever that, that language in the law seemed outdated and also unnecessary. Also, the language um, specifying the National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 66 seemed unnecessary since um, that may or may not be current. I mean, they may adopt additional standards later. So that's been changed to just say under federal regulations. Um, it's not exactly an earth-shattering bill. Well, I guess it's I a clean up bill. <coughs> it's a clean up bill. I guess I'd have one question: is if we, I guess my question would be whether it's not a real good idea. I mean, I. Let me change, change that around. I've been looking at things written backwards for so long that I'm going to say it forward. Mm -hmm. uh, if we say that the division has to adopt standards consistent with this, and then we say that, that the division has to adopt um, the same things that the federal government does, I thought there was some question of whether we were Ill illegally delegating to the federal government and by changing it to May and saying that when those things are changed, we may consider them, uh, we remove any question of that. Mm -hmm. We did have yes. some discussion about that. Yes? yes? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So it is a good idea to, to clean that up mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons. Are there any questions for Wayne? Is there any more discussion? Do you have any, any presentation? Wayne, do you... Um, need to say anything? <laughs> you can put this here in the record. <laughs> we, we have with us um, a uh, Wayne Ivey and he has a um, page of testimony that um, basically says that uh, we're going to keep doing things the way we're doing them. You want to say something? That's right, Madam Chair. <laughs> For the record, my name is Wayne Ivey, Motor Vehicles Division. Uh, if you like, I will read this into the record. Uh, it basically goes along with what Claudia has said. Uh, Don't read it. It's good okay. enough. <laughs> it's very clear. Uh, the halogen light thing is completely um, out of date now. Needs to be removed. Yes, Madam Chair. Is there anything? Well, I have a question on line five. Um, okay. Is it necessary to put more vehicles before division? Good question. I can. Claudia? I asked the same question, and then I answered it myself. In a bill, um, you know, the form and style of legislative council, if it doesn't say anywhere else in the bill what division of what it's pertaining to, they automatically put the name of the division. And uh, that's kind of unfortunate in this case because it'd be nice to get rid of all those, but um, they insist on at least saying one time in a bill to what agency they're referring. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. Well, you wouldn't know unless you read section 439, chapter 338, like you should do, and then you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then you could read the bill somewhere. 
<laughs> well, for some reason, it's part of the law. Part of the bill. But this is standard form that they use. Well, I, I'm not arguing with the council now. It's usually it cost money to argue with the committees because they charge you for their time. <laughs> <laughs> is there any more discussion of it? Is there any objection to recommending it to the full committee with the details? If not, so ordered. Is there anything further to come before this point subcommittee? We decided that our registration fee bill would be under the full committee. Yes, and there are relating to vehicle bills. I don't want to appear <laughs> pressing on it or anything like that. I thought you were working with staff to find a bill for them to put it on the schedule. Okay, so so it just needs to be scheduled for the full committee. Is there anything else to come before the subcommittee? If not, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.